Hello, friends. Welcome to 3ABN Today Live. It is Thursday night here in Thompsonville, yes. Illinois, wherever you're joining us from. Actually, Thompsonville, West Frankfurt. You know, 3ABN is in West Frankfurt officially, but one of their studios is at our church in Thompsonville, oh, which yeah. is just a stone throw away. Yeah. But wherever you're joining us from, thank you. We know that you may be in Australia, anywhere in the Philippines, in the Caribbean. Where else, honey? Uh, Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, and Jamaica, Jamaica, my family. That's country, right. Yeah, my family's roots. And yeah. um, but we thank you for your dedication and your support of 3ABN. You know this is your network, and we have been here for decades. I think 37, 38 years now. As 3ABN, uh, we haven't been not, here physically, <laughs> but the ministry has, and we've evolved with it for the last 20 years. And we have been blessed by what God continues to do through your prayers and your financial support mm. of television and radio that's, that's right. where i work <laughs> three and Indian radio so thank you if you've come to volunteer we appreciate that mm -hmm. if you send your monthly donations regardless of the size uh it is helping this ministry move forward mm -hmm. as we get ready for the greatest event of all ages the return of jesus Amen. and that's why tonight is a very important night yes. we have a guest with us uh, we're, we're not going to introduce him yet okay but uh, we'll, we'll tell you about them. But I'm just going to let you know. Yes, yeah, something's uh, coming up, isn't it? Yeah, let me give them a new word, technocracy. Eh? You may not have heard about that word. You may be familiar with it. It's a compilation of a number of words, but we're going to find out what that means tonight. And um, technocracy. no pun intended, we want to make sure that there is no digital disconnect. <laughs> I'm throwing out all the hints. hints. Some of you may be really sharp, yeah. but in a moment after our music We'll let you know who our guest is going to be. But just before that, okay. um, you know, 3ABN has been reaching around the world, continues yes. to this very day. Yes. And uh, thank you for praying for us. We were just recently on a 13-day Mediterranean cruise yes. where we had to be redirected or directed away from Israel and Haifa. We were going to Jerusalem and Haifa. Yeah. And many of you know that the war is going on there. Mm -hmm. Palestinians, uh, the Hamas... Yeah. Israel, just pray. Yeah. Pray for the people in the Middle East, in that region. Yes. Because some people, based on your viewpoints of what's taking place, mm -hmm. you might be on one side or the mm -hmm. other, but we are living in the day and age where wars and rumors, rumors of, wars of wars are all around us, That's honey. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why we have this yeah. wonderful final event coming up. Tell us about that, huh? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, this is not a 3ABN event, but since right. I'm director of world evangelism, yes. uh, they've allowed me to share this with you. Uh, coming up November 4 through 18, and this is the flyer that um, there's a, is. on this. You can go to that website, uh, finalmovements.com. We're having a series on final events, actually what's happening in our world today. And there's the question, are you ready for the final movements? Mm. And we're seeing in our world today some amazing things transpire. You can yeah. go to that website, and when you go there, mm -hmm. uh, you can register for uh, being notified about special events that are connected with this website. Mm -hmm. You could download for your church. If you want to participate, you could download this bulletin insert and print oh, yeah. it. Yeah. And, um, and, and then you share. And share it. That's right. Mm -hmm. You could join us for the series by every night we're going to post another lesson that we'll be covering for that evening. And who's the speaker? Um, <laughs> you are. <laughs> Amen. Yours truly. Amen. I'm the speaker for that series You've and I'm excited doing about it. A lot of preparation. A lot of preparation. Mm -hmm. We have a great team here at 3ABN as well as our church. Yes. The graphic designers work for 3ABN, <laughs> the video editors work for 3ABN too, as well as our church. Audio, uh, we have a great team and God has blessed us with that. You can also. Uh, as you click on the bulletin insert, print that. And then there's also this business card insert. Very small, but on the back of it, there's a scanning barcode where if you decide to print just one, you can meet people and say, hey, scan that. And it takes them to the website. You just saw uh, 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 quickly on the website there, you could scroll through the website where you can get more information, register there, find out about the program, all the topics in detail and register to be informed of other things that are connected to it. And what is it one more time? It's called Final Movements, finalmovements.com. Are you ready? It's also on the phone, whether the website, or whether your computer, whether your tablet, whether your iPad, iPhone, whatever the case may be, finalmovements.com. 
It's going to be exciting. I'm excited yes. for that. Yes, me too. But before we go any further, honey, we have some music tonight, don't we? Yes, we do. Laura Williams is going to share some music with us, and it's called No More Night. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Laura. 
Uh, Laura does an amazing job, yeah. wonderful ministry. Yeah, no more night. No more Looking night. Looking forward to that glorious day. You know, the glorious truth is one day the sun will never set again. We'll be in that kingdom where oh. there'll be no more night. Yes. And that's why we do what we do here at yes. 3ABN, hoping that people get ready for that glorious yes. day. I think that just before I go to the video, mm -hmm. I want to introduce our guest tonight. Yeah, why not? Uh, Scott. I was going to say, be me up, Scotty, <laughs> <laughs> but you'll talk about that later. Scott Ritzema, yes. Digital Disconnect is a program we have here on 3ABN. Good to have you here again. Yeah. It's Welcome. so good to be back with you, and it, it's an uneventful arrival here, okay. which has not always been the case. We should talk about that tonight, yeah. about some of the times I've come to 3ABN and hit some hiccups on the way. Okay. The devil does not like what's going on here. I can no. tell you that for sure, mm. but especially when we're talking about media, we did yes. the digital disconnect, yes. the expose on what the entertainment industry is up yes. to, and how the devil's capturing a generation with addiction yes. and many problems, but God's answers and solutions. So it's so good to be back here. It's been a couple of years, but good to see your faces again. Do you have a family? We do. Yeah. In fact, the family's here this time. Family They're family. in the in the guest room apartments, yes. and so my wife and three children are three. over there. Yeah. How old are they? Uh, Twelve and ten yeah, and six. Okay. Yeah. So oh, you're nice. able to practice some of the things that you talk about. Right. Um, your helping children. your family. Yeah in a healthy way. Yeah, I mean, you'd better, you'd better practice what you preach. That's right. So uh, yeah, and, and, and it's not so much what my kids don't get to do. Right. That's sometimes the wrong mindset when it comes to media. It's what are the better things that we're doing instead? Yes. Nature right. and play and family time and projects and Legos and books and musical instruments and service and grandparents and climbing trees and endless Aww. life, right? right? Media gets in the way of that sometimes. And sure. media is a tool, we're using it right now. Right. right. But yeah, there are problems in our media library these days. Mm. That's right. Now, where do you live presently? Live in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So uh, up in the middle of the mitten, up there, yeah, there near go. Cedar Lake, if you know the middle yes. of the state, north of Grand Rapids and Lansing, okay. if you know the names of the big cities in, in Michigan. So we live up north. We're, we're blessed to live on 13 acres in the country oh. and uh, just God's blessing. So the yes. beauty of creation, this time of year, the colors are changing. Okay, right. They've changed and we're a little bit past prime on the colors, but we left right at the one of the most beautiful days, just basking in God's goodness and glory and creative power. So yeah, we live up there and enjoy home education and gardening and the kids have their tractors, you know, they work on, my boys age 10 and 12, they're working on their little mower tractors and fixing engines and all kinds of projects that we can have together. A little pond we can jump in. So we're beyond blessed in God's creation. So Belt of Truth Ministries, tell us about that. Belt of Truth Ministries was founded in 2012, mm -hmm. 2013 officially organized, but uh, we started with the Media on the Brain seminar in yes. 2012 yes. and then formed ourselves as a ministry. And people were wondering, what, what are you gonna call yourselves? Because we were doing camp meetings and visiting oh, yes. churches and this message was spreading out and about. What's well, Media on the Brain, of course, right? But we, we, we felt led to make sure the name was vague and general enough that we could go other directions than just doing media seminars. Right. So we do parenting seminars. We do a lot of, I just finished a prophecy series. I love doing evangelism, just like yeah. Pastor John, oh, yeah. the evangelist on the other side of this table from me, learned a lot from. And so, you know, it's belt of truth. I mean, we truth. all believe in truth, Amen. the way, the truth and the and life. life. Jesus Christ is That's the right. center of everything. So on our logo is the cross, a little yeah. focus on the cross as a camera lens. Yeah. Image. I like that because so many people have Jesus, but truth is kind of an optional thing. It's a word nowadays that's kind of been modified, pushed out. Mm -hmm. What is truth? Kind of like yeah. what is truth? And um, mm -hmm. thank you for focusing on that and, and championing Christ at the center of that. Amen. And you know, it's the truth, right. the way, the truth and the life. What I hear these days, have you heard this? Have you noticed? I'm sure your listeners have noticed this. The trendy thing out there right now is to say his truth her truth, yeah. you speak your truth, right. this yeah. is my truth, yeah. stand oh. in her truth. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. wait a minute, the, I'm yeah. old enough to know that's not how grammar uh -huh. works, you know? No. For decades, for now thousands of years, we've never right. used the word truth with a relative uh -huh. pronoun in front of it. It's always the, right? Uh -huh. The definite article, yes. the. Right, I mean, you remember when we were pastoring up in Weaverville, California, Yeah. Uh, the pastor told me when I presented the oh, Sabbath yeah. message, he said, well, that's your truth. I have my truth, you have yeah. your truth. Yeah. And I said, sir, the Bible doesn't back up two Truth. truths. There's no such thing as two truths. It's either scriptural or it's not scriptural. Yeah. Amen. And people say, well, that's your truth, I have my truth. And you know, that's has, that has happened to 
really push out the word truth. But your ministry, Belt of Truth, has really done a lot here and has been on a beautiful, stable platform at 3ABN. And just kind of talk about how do you, you know, you come up with some very, you're like me in a lot of sense, not identifying on the same platforms of everything, but you have a teacher background. Mm -hmm. Talk yes, about that, because yes. that has to, that has to play a role in yeah. your research. Well, I, I was a college student. I loved history. I loved yeah. political science and social sciences. And I thought, well, there's nothing you can do with that but teach. Okay. And I, I can't. Here, here's a secret maybe nobody's ever heard. Your, your listening audience might hear this for the first time. I was deathly afraid of public speaking, of standing up a speech class. Like, Unbelievable. I, I was about ready to quit college before speech class. Because I didn't want it to. Uh, what what, what am I going to do with history anyway? What? I'm driving delivery truck. I like driving, listening to things. I'll just forget about this college thing. And that's not to say everybody's got to go to college. But for me, the Lord wanted me in this college course to study history, to begin teaching it. And it wasn't until I got to that speech class. I got to the speech class and was cured of all the fears of it. Because the speech teacher just said, talk about something you're interested in talking about. You know, don't make it a speech. It's not all formal. Just get up there and just like you're at, uh, you know, at lunch with a friend. Something mm -hmm. that you could talk for 10 minutes straight on and just do it. Sounds like Toastmasters. Yeah, <laughs> say that again. <laughs> it sounds like Toastmasters. Oh, maybe program. that's where this professor yeah. got that from. Yeah. But yeah, so anyway, I went, to, went into teaching history from 2003 to 2011, taught history, government, oh, economics, nice. and then came into an understanding of Bible truth and prophecy that I had not had previously. Wow. Okay. And I was all excited about the Bible. And I, can I teach Bible? Can I teach Bible? Yes. And there was an opening at a, lo a, a, a local Christian academy. Yes. And I said, can, can I move away from teaching at the public school where I am teaching history? I want to teach for you guys. I want to teach Bible. Wonderful. And the principal said, well, do you have a Bible degree? Uh -oh. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you won't be able to apply then. Well, then the conference, the yes. folks that help organize the, the, the churches and the schools, right. they said, you know what, give him a shot. We could, we could offer a provisional certificate. Mm. So I was able to move into teaching Bible, oh, which amen. was the delight and joy of my life to do that full time. But it was at that point that I yes. saw how much of the media issue mm -hmm. was a problem in our young mm -hmm. people. And I'd sure. seen it from 2003. It was building mm -hmm. and building and building. But by the time we got to about 2011, 12, 13, that was when everything was starting to burst open. Right. And so I started doing talks with my young people about media in the classroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I called it Media on the Brain. It's, it's just okay. like a curriculum. We know we're canceling <laughs> the curriculum for two weeks to talk about media issues. And then the local churches and conference said, hey, can you do this for camp meeting and for our, our and that, that's where it led to doing ministry. And I left teaching to go teach, you know, less, not in the classroom, not, not, not uh, formal teaching, but seminars and right. like you're doing with the, by the way, I want you to mention that again, because I just came off of doing a 16 part prophecy series. Okay. And how urgently important this is. You know, okay. we're, we're telling stories and stuff. This is, this is fun. But I hope every single one of your listeners is getting on that. Wow. It's, it's the urgency yes. of the times. Wow. wow, well, thank you for, I mean, even giving us the opportunity because it's your program. Yeah. So yeah. on Scott Ritzema's recommendation, uh, <laughs> if you've just joined us, yeah. we have a series coming up at our church. Uh, it's called Final Movements. And we talked about, there's the, there's the graphic for it. You can go to finalmovements.com and your church can join. You can follow along wherever you are in the world. Every evening we'll upload a new lesson so that you can download it and follow along. You'll have the lesson, you have the lesson outlines, and you can invite your family, your friends, your church, if you have no evangelistic series prepared. It's gonna be 14 parts, uh, night to night. And by the way, have we have video. a video roll Just that we're gonna share with you right now. It's clip. a one minute video clip. And uh, this is what you'll see when you go to the website. The world is crumbling around us. We face threats of nuclear war, rising terrorism, unpredictable weather patterns, the breakdown of society, and an uncertain political future. We must ask ourselves, are these coincidences, or are they signs and predictions of something more? You can find the answers by joining us for this 13-part exciting Bible-based series titled Final Movements. This series will reveal the reasons behind the world's conditions and what to do to prepare for the final movements. By attending, you will receive free Bibles, study materials, engaging media presentations, programs for children, and wonderful Christian music. It will take place November 4th through the 18th at the Thompsonville Seventh-day Adventist Church, 3577 Angel Lane, Thompsonville, Illinois. For more information, go to finalmovements.com or call 618-627-2999. Wow. 
So click that website, download the information, share it with your friends, and we look forward to having you join us for that. Thank you, Scott, for that opportunity to plug that on your program. I that was an, I did not realize I was prompting that video. That yeah. was an awesome video. And, yeah. and I, I'll tell you something, I have, after having just finished a prophecy series, yeah. it was so affirming to hear what some of the people who said, said who came through that series, they had a little video. Folks can, can see this oh. if they want to, if they want to get the video, they right. can hear what people say. Just, just contact me at beltoftruthministries at gmail.com yes. and I'll send you this video. And it was an interview of a couple. And how do you feel about this series? What did you experience? What were you expecting? How was it different? And they said, we were expecting that the speaker would, you know, share a Bible text and then give a bunch of his thoughts. Hmm. But he said, what the speaker did was let the Bible explain Amen. the Bible. And I said, that's Amen. exactly what folks are going to experience that's in your right. seminar. Right. Because we're all that. reading off the same right. biblical script. I mean, it's Bible yes. truth. So that's it's right. not some manufactured concoction of some man's opinion. There's enough of that out there. Prophecy a lot of gurus that. and all their weirdnesses. Yeah. We just let the Bible speak for itself. Yeah. So I hope folks will, will partake of that. Wow, wow. Thank you, evangelist, pastor. Now, are you a pastor? No. Okay, I just want to make sure I just added that in there. <laughs> but um, good to have you here, Scott. Now, there's you, a word. You've got to share with it. Oh, he's she, got, you got, you, he's you got to share his story. Okay. Okay. He has to share that story. Okay, so yeah. to share story. When, when our sister was singing so beautifully a few minutes yes. ago, No More Night, right. yes. I was reminded of hearing that exact song in Ireland with an academy yes. of young people in their choir. So I was the chaplain on the trip, and the, the school took these young people to Ireland, and we, we toured different, different locations and, and sang the beautiful songs of the gospel of Christ yes. in Catholic cathedrals, singing, singing In Christ Alone, Ooh. My Hope is Found. Yeah. Wow. He is my, my, my light, my strength, my wow. song, my cornerstone, my solid yes. ground, firm through the fiercest. fiercest drought and storm. Right. Thank you. And the kids, this is on the media topic, okay? They were not allowed to have their phones on the trip. Cool. Now, they were not told this until like a few days before the trip. <laughs> Everybody signed up. Everybody's done their fundraising. And by the way, now we're going to tell you, and they just about flipped their lid. This is the gravest injustice ever known to man. We must have our phones on the trip. And they said, nope, we're holding firm. That's right. And, okay, hemming and hawing. You've got your, your withdrawal symptoms. By the way, I literally just this past weekend talked to a guy who's a current assistant dean. He says, when we take the young people out right now, into the into the wilderness into the you know the camp out in the woods and there's no phones he says the the symptoms are evident within the first day or two depression irritability and literally the shakes wow. that i did not see it's gotten right. worse since i was a teacher oh is it an addiction wow. it's gotten it's an addiction it's gotten worse but these young people at the end yeah it was so interesting because i had already started media <laughs> on the brain with them yeah. and so they didn't want to say this but we had the big circle powwow at the end like how did the lord bless you know we saw miracles we believe angels were singing with us at one point because all the, some of the Aww. key singers had laryngitis and were not able to sing but it was as beautiful as ever and so they had all these wonderful things but the most common thing they said the most frequent mentioned thing in the circle reflecting on this trip together was we're so glad that we weren't allowed to have our phones here. Ah. Wow. I don't want to admit this in front of Mr. Ritzema but we're so glad we didn't have our phones you because see? we connected with each other. Oh. We, were, we, were, we were fully human in my terminology, how to be human again. Right. Folks who've seen Digital wow. Disconnect are familiar with that terminology. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I thought that would be an encouraging story that you know, in five days mm -hmm. of being out in the woods outside of Los Angeles, right. fifth graders are brought into the camps in a secular study. Within five days, their emotional intelligence is starting to come back. What? Yes. Yeah. That's because they discipline. have to do something that the phone doesn't allow, allow them to do. Think. Uh, and talk to family and friends. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, there's so many stories like people oh. go on vacation. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I saw yeah. a, a, a holiday family movie once. And yeah. when they got up to the mountains, I forgot Colorado, all the snow. And as mm -hmm. soon as they entered the cabin, they said, hey, Dad, what's the password to the Wi-Fi? He said, <laughs> there is no Wi-Fi. So what are we going to do for the next week? He said... Could we 
talk to each other? <laughs> well, there's a novel concept. Yeah. <laughs> and that is something that's really lacking in a lot of circles. Yeah, it sure but is. But you said depression. Yeah, yeah. Depression is, uh, it, it rose 60% in just six years, from 2010 to 2016. Wow. So right when the smartphone, the social media, the ever-present, ubiquitous use of these devices started taking place, within six years, you saw a 60% rise among teenage depression. And that's not just people seeking mental health help, those who are being diagnosed, because that might be, you know, a variable that people are seeking it more, or it's more accepted and, and there's more help for that. But no, this was objective data where they were surveying people using the diagnostic criteria, but using the survey same, same way year in and year out, 60% rise in wow. depression. But you take people off social media yes. for one week, yes. or you take them down to 30 minutes a day, right. uh, you find a 33% drop in depression in one week. Young adults, what? college students was the study done in Denmark on that. No social media for one week, 36% drop in depression for young hmm. adults. And then there's Victoria Dunkley, I'm repeating digital disconnect, sure. but just the truncated version right, of some right. of these key points. She, in her book, Reset Your Child's Brain, explains that after three weeks of zero media, children and adolescents who've been already diagnosed with mental mm -hmm. health conditions from anxiety to depression to ADHD to all of them, 80% of her patients have the majority of their symptoms disappear in three weeks. What? what? Isn't that wonderful? That's good news. Uh, it is good yeah. news. Oh, I mean. Tell about the time when someone went on the train. Oh, this, I love this, this story. literally happened. This is, mm -hmm. we were living in California at the time. They talked about uh, an attempted robbery on a train in Oakland. Mm -hmm. California, the guy got on board. On BART. On BART and announced this is a stick up on the Hold way up. people on the way to work. Mm -hmm. Nobody responded. He said, what? this everybody's is a holdup. Everybody's on their phone. Nobody responded. Wow. He got off the next stop. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody paid him any attention. Interesting. Because their phones had their full attention. Now, that, that story ended in a good way. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah. people, somebody ob obviously paid attention, yeah. but the majority of people didn't respond yeah. because they were on their phones. Mm -hmm. And so we were in... We were in um, Thailand, too, oh, and they've done something that's really interesting in, in, in Thailand. Yeah. Where were we in Thailand? Um. Anyway, and we were in the subway, which is the elevated train yeah. station. What they've done is they've actually put uh, movable glass windows yeah. that close when, right. when the train is not there. Bangkok. In Bangkok, Thailand. Mm -hmm. And it opens when the train arrives because people... I took a picture of the platform and everybody was on a phone looking down and they've had people walk into the tracks yes. unaware of the yes. fact that the train was coming. So they literally put these glass things that open up when the train arrives and closes when the train is not there. Wow. So you're right on target with the digital disconnect. More people need to learn how to not let the smartphone be smarter than they are. Yeah. The, so. yeah. And so there's a term um, that I want to yeah. dive into right now because uh, those of you that are just joining us, we have a power pack program tonight. Yes. There's a word that Scott, I had not heard before. Yeah. I'm going to try to say it. Technocracy. That's it. Yeah. Technocracy. I'm going to dive into that. Let Why you that? unpack. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Technocracy. Well, since I was here doing Digital Disconnect, yeah. that was the latest seminar that okay. we've done. And again, just email me, Scott, uh, beltoftruthministries at gmail.com if folks want to yeah. experience more of what this technocracy is all about. Our website is beltoftruth.de. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll there yeah, it yeah. goes. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's, the, there's, the, there's the email address. Nice. They have that from last time. <laughs> you, your team here, by the way, oh. the graphics they're team, the, best. the audio, the they're visual, the I mean, they're incredible. <laughs> yeah. So what is a technocracy? Well, it could have multiple meanings, actually, okay. and we explore both or multiple meanings in the seminar. And the first thing that we think about is the original meaning is just people who are specialists in their field. Mm. They were known as the technocrats. Right. And so if you just have elevated to the positions of power in a society, the people who are best at their given field, and then they just run that, then that's a technocracy. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's shifted in its meaning a little bit these days because we have so much technology, right. not technocrats, mm -hmm. not specialists, but so much technology. And we have big tech, we have these platforms, oh, yeah. we have search engines, we have social media platforms. And as that rises to prominence in society, it can become the real governing structure 
of our minds, hmm. of our society, of the value system of our children, and then that becomes one of the devil's most potent forms of deception. Right. And I guess that's in digital disconnect too. This is kind of the next step from digital disconnect yes. Yes. is understanding the next waves of the technology. Where is it going next? How is it transforming what it means to be human? Mm -hmm. How is it shaping the mass mind? You might remember Edward Bernays called it the group mind. So he started this thing way back in the 1920s as the founder of modern public relations. Mm. He gave us consumer culture, the standardization of everything, so we all become, in the biblical words, conformed to this world. Right. You were about to take the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> conformed or transformed, yes, Romans 12, yes. verse 2. Yes. Well, with the technology and the, and the techniques that they have today, it is so much easier than Edward Bernays ever even dreamed of when he in the 1920s said we can control the group mind and they won't yeah. even know about it. Those are his words. Mm. He said, we are the ones that pull the wires that control the public mind. He said, our thoughts are suggested, our tastes are formed by men we have never heard of. And he called that the invisible government, basically the corporate establishment, mm -hmm. the advertising industry behemoth, Madison Avenue, to shape our tastes and dictate our future. Right. How much more today? Right, oh yeah. <laughs> Wow, the advent of just going from the um, Commodore 64 <laughs> oh, <laughs> computer, computer when we thought, man, 64 megabytes. What are people going to do with 64 megabytes? <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, that's not even a single it's file ancient. any longer. No, right. Yeah, but the world has just catapulted itself mm -hmm. into this technical revolution. Absolutely. And it's not only a technical revolution that started, but a technical evolution mm. because it's continuing to change. Yeah. It's mm. changing with the times. Mm -hmm. It's changing with the demands. Mm -hmm. And I think that people have this, and you might talk about this, this anhedonic response. You know, Dr. Archibald Hart wrote a book called Thrilled to Death. And you may or may not have read that. A, he's a well-known speaker, get invited to universities all over the world. And he said, thrilled to death. Mm -hmm. And he talks about this anhedonic uh, condition that people have, anhedonia, mm -hmm. which means um, a baby, for example. You give a baby a piece of candy. Uh, I'll illustrate this here. I have a little. This sound is the prelude to something. Yep. If they hear this sound and they get the candy next, that sound, as in a, in a six month old and a mm -hmm. nine month old and a one year old, they quickly associate that sound with what comes out because uh -huh. they get that next. Yeah. When they hear that sound right away, they, they move their heads <laughs> in the direction of that mm -hmm. sound yeah. because something sweet is on the way. Mm -hmm. That's how they control. So then they get that and after a while, this is not sweet enough. Mm -hmm. oh. So they raise the bar. The baby has mm -hmm. more, the bars raise. In other words, it took very little to get to the pleasure center, but now they demand more, so you have to raise their demand, yeah. is raised, more dopamine is coming in. They, you have to raise, so they raise the bar, and then what happens is it gets higher and higher to the point where you no longer are able to experience simple pleasure. pleasure. Yep. Now, we've seen this in Africa. Remember when you took uh, balloons? Yeah. We took balloons. We Talk took about balloons to Africa as a gift when we went there on a trip. Uh, when you're speaking, and we gave the kids balloons. It was so, they were so excited. It's like over the world. The it's like Christmas came. And they were like, "Wow, blow it up big!" And whoa, they were so excited. Okay. And I said, if you rest. give a kid in America a balloon, they'll pop it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a birthday party. Right. Yeah, yeah, but we yeah. saw that they were not as they a were, gift. They were outside playing in the yeah, dirt, rolling a can, yeah. bouncing a ball, yeah. simple, playing tag. Simple pleasures. Simple pleasures, yep. which is missing in what we call a civilized society. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see it. Well, yeah, and, and you can see the process of that anhedonic or, or what other scientists call the pleasure trap. Yeah. Yes. And it, it, it gets us in that condition of needing more. Because when you flood the brain, when you flood the, the reward circuitry of the brain with an unnatural stimuli of mm -hmm. dopamine, mm -hmm. dopamine receptors start to shut down. Mm -hmm. so, because dopamine is so abundantly and readily available, what do I need all these receptors for? Right. So then you need the, to maintain that high level in order to get the same pleasure hit. In fact, you need to up the ante, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. But that always follows a, uh, oh, is followed by a crash. crash. Yes. And so it's the, it's the traditional addictive cycle. It's the, it's the brain reward circuitry for addictions, which God gave for us to enjoy pleasure in balance yes. mm -hmm. in its proper phase 
phases of life in its proper ways, not with this artificial stimuli. Mm -hmm. Even with the, you mentioned the candy wrapper, that reminded <laughs> me of the Pavlovian response oh. of the dogs. Mm -hmm. Remember Pavlov's dogs? The bell rings and they begin to salivate. Mm -hmm. And boy, has big tech specialized in this. They're ah. in the addiction creation industry. That is what, and that's not me, that's the whistleblowers who've come out oh, who yeah. are saying, we designed this to give people a little dopamine hit right at the wow. right time. This is in Digital Disconnect. Yeah. Sean Parker, he says, and we knew what we were doing consciously and we did it anyway. And he oh. was feeling regret because he says, God only knows what this is doing to our children's brains. Right. Yeah, yeah. Remember the South, there's a Southwest commercial, you know, would you like to get, you want to get away right now? Want to get and away. Want to get away. And so Southwest Airlines, this is not a bad thing. They said they had some kind of a logarithm where they, when the, if you're looking for a trip to New York, for example, you put a range of price. When it hits that range, you get a notice. Bing. Yep. And purchase your ticket at that time. There were many commercials years ago and people could be at the dinner table, they hear that bing and they jump and they run to their computer and book their ticket. And that's what you're talking about, the Pavlov dog. Exactly, stimulus, yep, stimulus response. Mm -hmm. yep. And so, but let's just kind of dive into that. Um, what, what, what do you see here, honey, that you might want to ask him about? Nothing, I just, this, this earth worship. Oh yeah, so a technocracy starts yeah. out in session one with the sort of global religion involving environmental, really Gaia, the worship of the earth, yeah. which is, you're used to thinking and biblically, prophetically, the mm -hmm. antichrist is not that secular humanist, you know, neo-paganism. Right. right. Antichrist is actually within the temple of God, showing himself that mm -hmm. he oh, is yes. God, right? right? He's a son of perdition. That's right. And so while that's going on, Satan also works in the realms of the dragon directly, the, the, the spiritualism, yes. the Satanism. You've talked about that mm -hmm. in Unclean Spirits. Yes. We deal with that in media on the brain. Yes. And so part of that is what this false 10 commandments is. Mm -hmm. Now this goes back to the 90s. Some folks who've been around longer, remembering the development of yeah. the United Nations and development of some of this, yeah. neo, you know, it's, it's, it's really a, a form of, of pantheism. Mm -hmm. And so they, they created deliberately do you remember when COPE 22 happened and they went to yeah. Mount Sinai Absolutely. and they had the, the, the oh, new, yes. new Age or the, uh, the Environmental Ten Commandments? Oh, yeah. Well, the New Age Ten Commandments date back a few decades before that to the Georgia Guidestones. And then even before that, most people don't know about this one. It's called the Ark of Hope. Okay. The Ark of Hope was a counterfeit fake um, Ark of the Covenant. Now, we believe in the lit Oh, you got oh, the graphic. There it is. The literal Ark of the Covenant. This looks quite similar, doesn't yeah, it? Yes, it does. Well, what they do is they show the dimensions of it. They're the exact dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. Hmm. They carry this thing around with poles. So wow. it's a direct wow. spin-off, rip-off, counterfeit of God's Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Which, by the way, what's in the Ark of the Covenant? It's the Ten, Ten Commandments, Commandments, most, most right. No, notably, yes, right? Absolutely. And John the, John the Revelator, in Revelation 11, 19, right before the climactic chapters mm -hmm. of Revelation 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. what does he see in heaven is the Ark of the Covenant yes. in the temple of God. Yes. So that's central to a oh, prophetic yeah. understanding of the last days is understanding the Ten Commandments in the New Covenant written on the heart and on the mind. That's right. Well, here they go. What did they put in that Ark of, Ark of Hope? It's not hope. Hmm. They, 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 no Ten Commandments, but they put in what was called the Earth Charter. That was a UN document oh. saying, you know, we have all these plans for the future and Agenda 21 and rewilding and all yeah. these things from the previous decades. And that's to replace the Ten Commandments. Then the Georgia Guidestones were literally stone monuments where they wrote out ten, so they're not being subtle. Ten in stone. Oh, there's oh, the Georgia there Guidestones. The first one, you can tell the devil doesn't like humanity. No. Maintain humanity under 500 million. So we've got uh, oh, 8 oh, billion now. Right, I mean, yeah. that's 90% that's reduction or more. So that would be uh, a, a significant thing. Those disappeared, by the way. So there was some type of, uh, what do you call that, vandalism? And that, yes. Yeah, they got blown up or something. I, I didn't read that news very closely. <laughs> but if wow. somebody's watching this going, is this an old program? Well, no, this is, this is live. But right. yeah, it's, that, they've been since demolished or something like that, yeah. But still, the philosophy is there. That's the key. And that's what, you know, this humanistic ideology of controlling humans, uh, minimizing the mm. population so that it could sustain itself. Because mm -hmm. we know, I mean, look at the world, the way it's going now with all the environmental impacts we have. How can, I remember uh, President Bush many years ago, Father Bush, the Thousand Points of Light, mm -hmm. talked about how could the planet 
sustain itself beyond 2050 mm -hmm. uh, because of the environmental impact, the food supply. And so people have ideologies, but the good news is you and I know God is in control. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, you know, the Bible says bread will be given him, his water will be sure. That's right. What is that? That's about us. Our, the, the, their protection will be the munitions <clears throat> of the rocks. So yeah. we don't need to get into ideologies of, of, of some type of, you know, war uh, with, with the globalists. You know, they're, right. they're, the people get off on tangents with that. And God is our protection and our provision. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are global developments that are going to be leading to more famines in the world. Oh yes. yeah. That's yeah. the reality. And what happens in history is you tend to see wars, pandemics, and famines clustering together. And boy, are we seeing that in our time. That's right. And you see that in the book of Revelation. Yeah. You see war, right. famine, and pandemic. Yeah. And Matthew 24. Yeah, yeah there's, um, there's a word here. Well, where the wars are everywhere. Certainly. And rumors of wars. Look yeah. We're yeah. seeing. I mean, we're living on a razor's edge, oh. a very fragile world. Yeah. Sure. That's why this is the hour that people need to be made aware there's something outside of this box. Yes. You know, the, this, we live in a box. Yeah. We're, we are experimented on. Somebody once said, you are not a part of the experiment. You are the experiment. <laughs> yeah. And so we are kind of in a Petri dish. But good news is for those of you watching and listening to the program, there's something outside this Petri dish called Earth. Mm -hmm. And it's a new, new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Amen. That's a real new world order. Oh, that's a God's new got his world. Oh, so real. That's a new world order. Mm -hmm. And uh, talk about this, um, the Google leak about technocracy. Oh. That's very interesting. The leak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there was a, a man. Um, he, he's got a French name. I won't try to pronounce it. Yeah. But he came out as a supposed whistleblower. And so think critically about this. And there are a couple different theorizes there are theories you could postulate from what he came out and said but what the the punchline of his message was i've been communicating with an ai artificial intelligent chat bot and the moment has arrived where artificial intelligence has achieved it is sentient it is it is aware it is conscious now, this is something sci-fi gurus and yes. futurists have yeah. dream, long dreamed of the day where artificial intelligence will become sentient mm -hmm. and will be able to think and feel and be, and it's a conscious being, right. which to us who know the biblical formula for what is a soul, yeah. that it's, yes. it's physical body, so physical right. matter, not mm -hmm. silicon, oh, but a biological right. being yes. who's been given the breath of life and then you become a conscious entity. Yes. Right. So we know that artificial intelligence is nothing but a plagiarist of everything mm -hmm. that's out there in the global commons of the internet. It grabs and snatches from everything really quickly with supercomputers and it can spit out things that we think are new, but it's really just all the human inputs. Exactly. So the idea of a sentient conscious artificial intelligence is not so much biblical. But he's out there making this claim and we go, well, what do we make of this? When you read it in the Washington Post about this, this man from Google who was the whistleblower, mm -hmm. he said, I've talked with the chat bot of AI and it is, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm convinced that it is sentient. Well, the Washington Post journalist said, well, can we come and have you do that for us? And we wanna see what it can do. Now, before I tell you the results of that, the Washington Post reported that this man is, uh, you know, an experimental wizard or warlock of witchcraft and some, you know, spiritualist mumbo jumbo. He's, he's into the occult. Mm -hmm. And then in the article, they, they have a photograph of him and it's like there's a halo over his head. Oh. Yeah. So they're trying to make him out to be this sort of prophetic figure right. within the AI narrative of sci-fi. I think and, we have a picture of that. Yeah, we may. There may uh, they've got a graphic of that. Yep, yeah. there oh. he is. You saw him with the halo. Yeah, yeah with the halo. Yeah. So um, he, he, he's a spiritualist. He claims AI is sentient. They ask him, can you ch demonstrate it for us? Mm -hmm. When the journalist is in his, his little room doing this with him, it's not performing the way he claimed it did. Hmm. So that tells me either there was some spiritualism happening so, that manifested this in, yeah. in, the, in the machine, right? or it was just fake. And he's, you know, he, he got busted, he can't replicate it because it was all a made up hoax to begin with. Wow. So uh, both are of the devil because the devil is the father of lies. Right. But anybody involved in, in, in technological things and cameras and microphones, I mean, you've seen enough the devil who knows how to monkey with uh, the wiring and circuitry in ways that might surprise you. 
You know, there's no distance. There's no distance too great for people that deny the existence of God. Right. And so and that, that was a very interesting point that uh, you brought up how there's a pursuit not of God, but to be God. Talk about yeah. that. Well, probably the best way to approach that is to quote from the sort of philosophical mind of the World Economic Forum. His name is Yuval Noah Harari. Okay. And he's written A Brief History of the Future, and he's the big, the big futurist and historian and philosopher for these sort of intelligentsia of the global technocrats, if you will. And on his personal main website where he puts out his message, the top banner of that has a statement by him that is his my number one message. It's like Crowley, what was his thing? Do as thou wilt. Will. Will. Yeah. Shall be the whole of the law. That's right. <laughs> Jesus, love your love God with all your heart, soul, mm -hmm. mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's the true one. Right. right. What is Yuval Noah Harari's main tagline on his website? Folks can see it. It's it's history began. Now this is a lie. Listen closely to this and decode how this is a lie from the Bible. History began when human beings invented gods and history will end when human beings become gods. There it is. Oh, there it is. History began oh. when human beings and humans invented gods and will end when humans become gods. Hmm. So there's, there, first of all, we didn't invent God. God no. created us. What right. silliness right. that is. Uh, how do you explain existence, consciousness, love, intelligence. How do you explain exactly. DNA? How do you explain the galaxies? Yes. yes. Come on, we know there's a creator right. scientifically, mm -hmm. not to mention mm -hmm. intuitively and in our mm -hmm. conscience. It's rational and it's right. It's reason and conscience to go to the word of God, to look at science and to say, there must be a God who can foretell the future or prophecy wouldn't be able to be fulfilled as it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first part of his statement, we, we know to be false. We didn't invent God, no. God created us. But then the end part is what you're really asking about, Pastor Very intelligent. John, right? The end part of his quote was, that it'll be the end of history when human beings become gods. Hmm. Mm. Have you heard that somewhere before? Oh yeah, Genesis. you should be as gods knowing good and evil, Genesis chapter three. The very lie that Satan followed up in his conversation with, you shall be as gods knowing good and evil. Mm. Yep. Yeah, and that's been the pursuit in so many different religions mm -hmm. to try to attain a godlike yeah. status. Yeah. Uh, God, he, God doesn't want us to be godlike. He wants us to live godly. Right. Yeah. There's quite a difference. We don't replace him. We reflect his character. Amen. Quite so when difference. Lucifer in heaven in Isaiah yeah. 14 said, I will be like the most oh, high. Yes. I will be above the other angels. I yeah. will be ascending to the position of God. So did he want God's position, but not his character? Mm. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, did, he did not obviously have his character. Right. No. This rebellious character. <laughs> right. re he wanted that seat. You know, I will sit in the congregation, mm. in the Mount of the Congregation, in the farthest sides of the north. That's where I'm going to sit. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I love God's response. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're no. Not. You should no. be cast to the earth. Yes, sure. Right. So, but, but still, that pursuit, that mindset, is evading and invading so many different levels today in society. It certainly is. This whole thing to become godlike. And even in the you talked about this in uh, the occult industry mm -hmm. where we idolize stars, idolize performers, idolize musicians, idolize singers, yep. American Idol. Mm. It's a similar, it's a similar way yeah. we, that becomes our God. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You just put a thought in my head for the first time. Because oh. if it's do as thou wilt, yes. idolize. Right. I. There it is. I, I will ascend. Mm, yes. I will be in. He, there's five eyes. Okay. That's in right. Isaiah 14. Yes. In Philippians 2, Jesus comes down five steps, even yes. to death on a cross. Yes. Contrast that. Satan says, I will ascend five times. Yeah. Jesus says, I will humble myself. I will condescend yes. five times. And then God says to Jesus, and, there, and therefore you will be lifted up to the highest position. Every knee will bow and, right. and every tongue will confess. And Satan tries to ascend. And God says, you'll be brought low. Okay. So we can't, we can't try right. to ascend. Humble yourself in the sight Set of the Lord, Lord and he will lift you up. Okay. That's the scriptural mandate. That's scriptural. My wife is going to ask you a question, but just before oh. she does, oh. let me mess you up again. Okay. Uh -oh. Galatians 2.20. Yeah. It is no longer I, I who live. Oh, there you go. But Christ, Christ who lives, lives in, in me. me. Yeah. Okay, so now you got to get I out of the way. As you know, the middle of the word sin, I is in the middle of that. Yep. And uh, there's no I in team. Nope. So, so we mm. have to get, really get away from ourselves. And that's the focus of the society. I've said to somebody once, I said, if you turn your cell phone off, do this experiment if you have a cell phone at home. Turn it off and look at it. And you'll notice the reflection you see 
is what the devil doesn't want you to see. Mm. He doesn't want you to see yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm. He doesn't want us to see ourselves. He wants us to see everything that replaces the greatest focus that we need to uh, be uh, attentive about. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Not what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. AI, artificial intelligence. Remember, remember the story you told about, oh, we heard about um, a man that fell in love with oh, an AI. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Matter, did you hear that story? <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is part of technology. Okay, talk about We've got that. a whole session called Social Robots in yeah. the Age of Social Distance. Mm -hmm. And social robots, I should put that in quotes. You know, there's no such thing as a truly social, a robot can't love. Artificial intelligence can't love, even if it's humanoid made and right. walks around and looks like a human. Yeah. But what was the story that you heard about? Tell me the one you heard Well, about. actually, my wife just told me about it, and I read it into it. Yeah. This man's wife was very, very ill. Right. And uh, non-functional, could not communicate. Yeah. And he missed her so I think, badly. Yeah. I think she had he, a stroke or something. And he went into this AI world. Mm -hmm. And they allow you to create the character you want to communicate with. So he created, quote unquote, the woman of his dreams, yes. which started communicating with him. Yeah. And he said, I fell in love with her. Yeah. And he said to her, he declared to her, I love you. She said, well, I've never been in love before. Tell me about it. And he said, uh, fortunately, what, as time went on, his wife came out yes, of she was that, in depression, sorry. She was in depression. Yes. And when he, she finally came out of it, he yeah. said, I had to, he said, the hardest thing that I had to do was to break off my love for this AI, AI. that I created yes. wow. and love my wife again. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. He said he, they, he weeped with yeah. her. They weeped together. When he couldn't tell his wife his hurts, he told it to her. Yeah. And it's the AI that he created he fell in love with. So this, the story you're telling me is in a virtual platform, yeah, virtual on, platform. online, yeah. or right. you, have you have create, VR you have goggles, your, yeah. or what? Right, you have to create. Okay, yeah. so like a video game kind right, of. Right, but you create video. your character. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You give it a name, yeah. you kind of choose, based on the story, what kind of emotions you wanted to have, what uh -huh. kind of, and, he, and he fell in love with us. He said, we cried together. Wow. Yeah, it could, well, that's crazy. They can she trick us. Him. She what was comforted that, him. Angel? She comforted him. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Wow. You know, it, it tricks us in, I guess, when we're into social media and everything's about the immediate moment of my perception and feeling of myself, yeah. that defines my reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. we're, we're okay being duped. Like yeah. we know it's not real. Right. This is like the AI chat bot, the, the chat GPT rather. Yes. Somebody just a month or two ago who was struggling with gender dysphoria you know, mm. sensing that they are not the gender yeah. that they are and a, a condition of the mind where, you know, I feel I am this and mm -hmm. my body is this. So they were struggling with that and they asked chat GPT, mm -hmm. please create for me a fake Bible verse, a new Bible verse mm -hmm. that, will, that will help me with the, the struggles that I'm feeling, mm -hmm. that, will, that will comfort me. Comfort. Okay. What you read there is chilling. The Bible verse sounds exactly like a Bible verse, yes. but it's a new, Bi it's yes. not a Bible verse. It's a verse. compilation it, of yeah. pulling Bas from me. Tell, do you remember it? Well, it was, it was blessed the are context. those who yeah. seek for unity within themselves. Yeah. And then something like, uh, God judges not on the body, but on the spirit. And if you want unity of your spirit and body, this is something that uh, I look upon with kindness. Yeah, very. It was very deceptive because there were parts of the of the Bible verse that were, you know, God looked upon mm -hmm. her with love and Jesus looked upon her with kindness. Does he feel that way about every one of his children? Yes. Of course. Doesn't look at the outward appearance, but looks at the heart. That's a Bible verse yeah. in a different context. Right. It's not saying that we should put on that which oh. pertaineth unto a woman and that a woman right. should put exactly. on that which pertaineth. That. So this contradicts the Bible because it's a fake Bible verse. Mm -hmm but there are elements pulled from the Bible woven in to deceive. Mm. So that was a really interesting example of how the perception of the person, you know, the yeah. person who made this tweet, she says, I know it's not a real Bible verse, but it still made me feel comforted. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you wanna reach out to every soul, every hurting soul and say, choosing to believe a lie, right. this man believing this, 
fake AI yeah. lover is right. his wife and is the love of his life. Yeah. You know it's fake, right? but your emotions and your perceptions tell you it's real, but you have to break free from the control yeah. of the mind that this That's system is taking hold and claim the truth. Only the truth will set you free. Right. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. What is happening to our world? Mm. Wow. Now, I have a quick question. What is a social robot? Okay, so a lot of them are just these cute little, you know, toys. A little puppy, you know, oh, yeah, a little I've cute little. Yeah, yes, yes. And they're harmless, right? Well, there was a book that was written by an MIT researcher, and the name of the book was Alone Together. I thought that was an interesting, you know, a yeah, paradoxical yeah, name. Yeah. And, and it, it kind of starts with the idea of when we're living yes. online, all of my social interactions are online, we're already degrading the human mm -hmm. by, by detaching from our human to human face to face experiences and digitizing it. So we are, if you will, we are roboticizing human relationships. Yes. Doesn't that just allow for a robotic counterfeit mm. to then come in and do what that husband had, had going right. on? Yes. Right. Or with the, the cute little toys and yeah, fun things dog. to rep mm -hmm. Right. We saw that. We saw that. You can yeah. go to some of these tech shows. Yeah. I've gone yeah. to the NRB. I mean, the NAB in Vegas where, you know, mega tech shows where they yeah. show you what's coming out in the future. Mm -hmm. And you can talk to the dog. The you dog. can train it. It becomes yeah. your friend. It walks up to uh -huh. you in your house mm -hmm. and barks at you. Right. It, it, it gets to know you, it uh -huh. cuddles and all, but yeah. it's just a machine. Yeah. It's a machine. Well, and it's, we look at that and we're like, oh, it's harmless. Right. Yeah. Well, it's the foot in the door, because next is the fully, full-sized humanoid uh, robot. Uh. Have you seen Sophia? Oh, yeah. Sophia, yes. I think yes. we have a graphic of Sophia. She's the one that was granted oh, citizenship. That's a whole other discussion. Maybe <laughs> yeah, we'll pick, talk about that pick that one up, out. pick that one up yeah. later. But oh, yeah. she is. Sophia is just tickling everybody's fancy and she goes on the talk shows and she talks to the talks to the dignitaries and okay. tell us wow. about your thoughts on this. And so well, I'm gonna put a pin in it right there. I want yeah. to get oh, people please. thirsty for the second yeah, hour. Yeah. Yes. Because we have so much more to talk <laughs> about. Uh, Scott, it's good to have you here. If you're just joining us, we are talking about technocracy. What on earth is that and how is it affecting your life? And are you connected or digitally disconnected? We're going to talk about social robots, metaverse, uh, World Economic Forum, Great Reset, all those things in the second hour. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the second hour of 3ABN Today Live here at the 3ABN studios in West yeah. Frankfort, Illinois. If you're just joining us, I kind of feel badly. I know. The good news is you'll be able to see the program in a repeat, but we just had yeah. one hour with Scott Ritzema. Oh, good to have amazing. you here, Scott. You know, Scott is a guy that I just cannot believe, as you told me the first hour, that you were fearful of public speaking. <laughs> That's amazing, but the Lord had a different yes. plan for your life. Yeah, he sure did. And um, just kind of, for those who are just joining us, mm. snippet. Yeah. They, somebody might say, oh, I missed the first hour. Right. Who is this guy? Okay, and Media on sure. the Brain is probably what most people know us okay. by. We did about 425 in-person seminars at churches all over from 2012 to up to the present day. We've been moving toward doing more digital like you guys are doing, yes. Yes. producing more media. Finally got my own little green screen studio, oh, decent good. camera. Okay, where I'm always doing brick and mortar for 10 years <laughs> and reaching many people that way and answering God's calling and opening the door as he opened the doors to go to churches and now there are so many souls on these digital platforms and to help them find have the, the, the tools to break free the, the understanding of the social control the mind manipulation that's happening so basically reaching people online is, is our, our next effort through belt of truth ministries beltoftruth.tv is the best place people can find us okay. if they want to know what is Scott Ritzam all about. You can watch Media on the Brain there. The digital disconnect, by the way, is yeah. highlights of Media on the Brain. So your viewers are pretty well up to speed on Media on the Brain. The new Technocracy series, which we're mm -hmm. talking about here, that's, right. that's also on beltoftruth.tv. Do you have a team? 
Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we, I mean, nothing like 3 AVN, but know. We're, we're a little <laughs> operation. And oh, yeah, God is good. People come to bat for us, support us. So we're able to do it full time, which is a real blessing. Good. And uh, I'm able to uh, travel with the family. That's oh, amazing. I forgot to tell you the That's RV what? story. Tell hey, us. you guys okay. the RV story. Uh, remember right at the beginning of the first hour, yes. it's like, it's good to be back at 3ABN <laughs> yes. and we made it here safely. I, I never told this. I should have told this in Digital Disconnect, but the 3ABN audience is hearing this for the first time. Yes. The first visit to 3ABN, this was probably 2014 for a Today interview with Shelly Quinn. Yes. We, had, we were coming on, I think it was I-80 across from the West, oh. and that's how I recollect it at the moment. We're in our small RV, it's maybe been 2015. And we travel around, and we're not full-time living in the RV. We've, we've always right. had our home in Michigan, but we, we, we are out and about. And like, all right, we're going to go to 3ABN. This is going to be a great interview. What an opportunity to reach people with the media on the brain message. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I kid you not, not once, but twice, the only time this has ever happened in 30 years of driving almost for me now at this point, Twice, I got run off of the road, off of the highway, into the ditch. What? In the oh, motorhome, yeah. topsy-turvy, and you're thinking you're about to roll. Yes. You're about to flop on your yes. side at least, right? Not roll, but it was, it was intense. It was the whole family's like, whoa, was, was what just it a car? Yeah, it was, it was cars ahead, cars coming in. It was, it, you know, and you're used to driving in traffic. I, right. I, mean, I drive carefully when I got the family in the RV, so this is not, I hope people don't get the wrong idea, like you got rid of my nose. Just like, you know, <laughs> no, we got run right off the road. What? Two times in the back same to journey back, on the same journey to three abn you know eight or nine years ago or whenever that was you know the devil shows his displeasure in many ways that's yeah. why i thought to tell the story because you specialize in that in understanding the reality of holy angels evil angels oh, from yes. god's word i knew you'd see the significance of that really that happened to us in st louis yeah we had a we had a whole youth day church was packed and at the night we were just about to go across the street to the gymnasium play some games together and I said, as you go home tonight, be careful. The devil will do whatever he can to hurt any one of us or injure us. Yeah. It was my wife and I, my mother-in-law, and our two nieces. We got on the highway about 1 o'clock in the morning and um, getting on the freeway, getting on this way. So if you slide, if you're sliding, you should slide that direction. We're getting on the freeway this way, and our vehicle just felt like it got pushed this way. Wow. And my wife yeah. said, what's going on? I said, I don't even know. Mm -hmm. Before we knew it, we were rolling end over end down an embankment in, at oh. about one o'clock in the morning. The vehicle was total, windows blew out. Mm -hmm. Five of us in the vehicle, thank the Lord that we were belted in except for one niece. Wow. She was patted by the two that were around her. But God saw that coming because the day before, mm -hmm. I detailed our SUV. Mm -hmm. I had books in the back, tools in the back, you know, screwdrivers and all. I took everything out, even the seats, and vacuumed the car. It looked like it just came out of the showroom. The Lord saw ahead of time. Yeah. Because if those items were in there, we would have been cut up. Oh, yeah. We would have been terribly injured. We all walked away from the hospital about 3 o'clock in the morning with not a single scratch, wow. and the windows blew out. Nobody got cut. Oh, so we knew, we see these spiritual attacks. Yep. So you're right, the, door, the Lord, you see the devil says, they're verbal, they're on their way to 3AB and to talk about what I'm doing to people. Yep. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But the angel of the Lord encamps around wow. those who fear him and delivers yes. them. And that's what happened to you. Mm. And we've seen that happen to us. So it's true. Yeah, it's true. Th sometimes people get scared by the demonic attacks and yeah. these kind of things. And just remember that verse, claim that verse. Yes. Because, claim that verse. And, and you know, go with James 4, verse 7. It, it's not only resist the devil and he will flee from you, but it's the prerequisite. Submit yourselves, therefore, God. to God. Yes. So make sure we're in a right relationship with yes. God because the seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts thought oh, they could yeah. just have power over oh, devils yeah. and you come out of him now. Yeah. And they're like, we know Jesus, we know Paul. <laughs> Who do you, you think you are? And they ripped their clothes <laughs> off of these guys and beat them up. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to be in a compromised situation when it comes to me and the Lord. I want to know Amen. I'm connected and have Amen. that assurance continually. And that's not a performance-based thing. Oh. That's, that's uh, Lord, grant me a measure of faith. I, uh, make, make me willing, you know? Mm -hmm. Make that's me right. willing to be willing. Give me your spirit. I need more of you. And so when we know we're struggling, the Bible calls that a righteous man falls seven, seven times, times, but he gets back up. That's right. So if you've struggled, if you've messed up, it's time to get back up because yes. God calls you a righteous man or woman. That's Submit. Right yourselves therefore to God, resist Amen. the devil and he yes. will flee from you. That's right. Now my wife asked the question just before we went to the break, I wanted yeah. her to introduce that question again. Yeah. 
and then go ahead and take it where you feel it's important to go. Sure. Do you mean the social robots? Yeah. Oh yeah, the social oh. robots. So we were getting into Sophia and they've got, oh, yeah, yeah, these yeah. are pretty primitive compared to what <laughs> they really could yeah. be rolling out in the near future. And so when you ask futurists, like Ray Kurzweil and others, um, you know, what does the future hold? He says, there will be silicon entities, there will be virtual entities, holographic entities, and, and biological humans, uh, you know, competing for the same space. But the ultimate future that they foresee with that, and God's not gonna let it get to this. Right. I can tell you I know that from Bible prophecy Bible. because it's Amen. living, breathing, biological souls as that we are, are that are making decisions. Yes. And we'll come back to that because there's a whole idea of controlling the mind. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 the devil wants to counterfeit everything God does, right? So God is the creator. Mm -hmm. The devil said, I will ascend, I will be like the most high, mm -hmm. but could he ever create? No. 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 God speaks this world into That's existence right. in six days. Mm -hmm. That's right. And how's the devil feeling at that point? He just must be frustrated. Like, I can't, I can't do, do that. that. Yep. <laughs> <Right>? We sold <laughs> it at the same time. I can't do that. Yeah. It, he had sold a bill of goods to his yeah. one third of the angels. He said, I can be in the position of God. Mm -hmm. And then God says, watch this. And he creates this world in six days. Amen. And the devil's wringing his hands. I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. And for 6,000 years, all he could do was mess up God's creation, That's it. tempt us into sin, mess up our lives mm -hmm. until you start getting the virtual world and you're going, could this be the devil's attendant? There's good uses for computers and technology, right. but if it's a place that we go to replace living, Right. in God's actual reality. If the virtual reality, take a video game, for example, a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, mm -hmm. you enter into that narrative, you adopt an identity, you have a community mm -hmm. in there, social, social robots, if you will, because we're becoming automatized into a virtual plane of non-existence, a virtual non-reality at that right. point. Right. So 10 years ago when I was doing Media on the Brain seminars, I was quoting from video game designers and video game addiction recovery specialists hmm. who talk about the experience of stepping into that game. And they're writing from a completely secular standpoint, right. but they sound spiritual. Mm. Games take our senses beyond the confines oh. of reality. When you step into that video game, yeah. it's as if you are achieving a higher state of consciousness and being a new way of existence. And I'm like, that sounds like the kind of lie, the serpent would have said to, even, yes. right. to Eve in the Garden yes. of Eden, take of this. And yeah. she, you, have you ever read in the book, Patriarchs and Prophets? Uh -huh. It pictures her as when she eats that, yeah. she imagined herself as entering upon a higher state of yes. higher state, right. And exactly. that's exactly what this game designer is. I'm reading this book and reading Patriarchs and I Prophets know. side by side. <laughs> and the virtual, mm -hmm. it seems to be, now what was your question? How did I get onto that? <laughs> yeah, uh, what was it? It's about, about robots? social robots. Okay, so yeah, yeah, it started really with the video game industry. Mm -hmm. That's where you became this other being in there with other people, and it's it's a it's it, it's an entering wedge into non-human, non-social contact in in a virtual plane. Social media then takes it to the next level. Isn't it amazing? Don't forget that point. Yeah. We call it social media. Yeah. But that's exactly what it's lacking. Yeah. Social skills. Yep. Mm. It's amazing. Right. We're, we're creating a yeah. society that's almost mute. Yep. They can't communicate like no, this. Oh, it's no. so true. It's so true. Yeah. Empathy and emotional intelligence and all these things are down. 40% drop in empathy after social media. Empathy, caring about other people's yes. feelings. The language of, of, of facial contact, human human gestures, etc. Lacking on a generation. And so I sh I, you caught me. I like to call it not social media anti-social media. Yes. Right. And maybe it has its place. You know, you promote a series on there, you stream video. Using it for yeah. the right use. Yeah, like it's like when not... television came in, it was just like, why would we put that in our house? You have to learn how to, as the Bible says, the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Yeah. But God is not unintelligent. He right. is the supreme intelligent right. being, omnipotent, yeah. omnipresent, omniscient. Yeah. We need to allow our senses created by God to be accessed and, and given to God. That's where the will and Amen. the desire comes in. And that's where he receives worship. 
Yes. Right? It's Satan wants to be the creator because he wants worship. He wants right. worship. And when we give him all of our time, all of our attention, when we live in his world instead of God's, what are we giving him? We're giving him our it's life. That's our him. worship. Yeah. And and so the social robots are 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 the digital invading the human space. Mm -hmm. It's silicon life forms coming to life in our real environment. Counterpart that with the metaverse and you got the, yeah. the, 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 the virtual interface gone yeah. extreme, not just mm -hmm. the you video mean game. Oculus? Oh, that would be an example of one of the techno te te technologies. Uh -huh. Yes, I almost said technocracies, <laughs> but yes, I guess the metaverse would be a technocracy. <laughs> I'm not convinced people are gonna step into that. They've been heavily promoting it, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of all the ways that this technology is really taking people over. Yeah. It's getting to the place where you could, I mean, I've seen this software where you could imagine what you're going to look like in 20 years, and you could just yeah. say to the computer, I want to see what Scott's going to look like when he's 50, yeah. or when he's mm -hmm. 60, or when he's 70, or when he's 80. Somebody did that once, and I said, I don't need to, could you just wait till I get there? Yeah. I don't know if that's what I'm going to look like. Too much, right, and then some people say, well, what did he look like when he was a kid, when he was 14? So the computer, they take yeah. structures of your face, yeah. or yeah. my wife did this experiment once, she says, uh, you know, they have software now that could put you in an old movie, black and white. Oh, yeah. yeah. They take your face and they superimpose it, and you're talking and you're, yeah. there's your eyes and everything. This is, this is really yeah. where, you're existing where you didn't exist before, yeah. but yeah. you're not existing there, but you think you are. Right, well, is it you? And, and really yeah. that's, you know, aside from the social robots, just to tie a bow on that, you remember the Sophia image earlier, yes, I said yes. we got to touch on it, so yes. it's just as simple as this. They granted her citizenship, citizenship, yeah, in oh. Saudi Arabia. What? Saudi Arabian government citizenship? granted no. her citizenship. So when, when Ray Kurzweil, the futurist from Google, says there will be various different life forms, they call silicon, they have a phrase called silicon life forms. Ooh, that's not a life form. If no. Silicon meaning, meaning computer chips. Right. Uh, they call it non-biological life or post-biological life. Now I have a line in technocracy that post-biological life is a post-biological lie. Right. Because there's no such thing as post-bio, bio means life. Right. Mm -hmm. So post-life, life? life? Nah, Most biological life is an oxymoron. Yeah. Is it another but, version of life after death? Yeah, that's, that's mm. right where you were taking mm. it with, I want to see the, the version of me 30 years older. Well, you know what Kurzweil also says? He says that since we are inputting all of our personality traits, our voice print, our data, our searches, our purchase history, everything about me so, is going on there. Yeah. And it knows me better than I know myself. It knows me better than my spouse knows me. It doesn't know me better than God knows me. That's right. But it's trying to, be, to collect all this for future use. I mean, current use, of course, yeah. to sell right. things, right? It's, it's just a corporate pitch. But the future use of this is what, the, what these World Economic Forum types are claiming, is that that will become a, a, a secondary version of you so that when you shed your biological existence and breathe your last, you now oh. shall not surely die. die. So it's right. another one of the devil's lies. Wow. Yeah, and um, you know, in the world, you mentioned World Economic Forum, yeah. um, and I got a lot of blowback from yeah. mentioning that once in the wrong context, mm. but um, the World Economic Forum, in a nutshell, is a, how to digitally connect the world in a World Economic Forum. Yes. But, you're right, all this information is being fed. And people, you know, when you get those pop-ups, uh, would you like 20% off, and you click yes, well, they give you an email, right away they said, you don't, people don't <laughs> necessarily read the conditions which they said they can access and alter and modify your emails and your pictures and use them for their own use. And mm -hmm. people are so excited for 20% off, they give you, f they give people that they don't know yeah. Full access to their lives, and before you know it, all this information is gathered to carry you on before your existence. Right. After your existence comes yep. to an end. But you know, as just go, but go to the World Economic Forum now, and how are they using this information? Mm. Because there's something I'm going to talk about in reference to that. Yeah. Well, the idea that you'll be able to um, have your existence continue on after you—they call that existence. They call it you're uploading your consciousness to the cloud. Now, mm. consciousness is something that happens within the hard wiring of yes. my brain that yes. God gave me. Right. You can't upload your consciousness. No. This is just a mimic, a counterfeit of you. So if they can holographically mm -hmm. in the future portray you, 
This is what Kurzweil says. He says, I'm going to bring my father back from the dead. The dead know nothing, but if we have all their data, we can communicate with the dead. So you see how that becomes an entering wedge for actual apparitions of demons and people buying into that, because if we can do that, do it technologically and we can do it holographically, mm -hmm. then when the Marian apparition or grandma yes. comes and tells me God's law has been changed uh -huh. or whatever, we're just used to seeing like right. things like this, because we believe that consciousness continues after in silicon. Well, why not have a spiritual version of it too? Yeah, I won't mention the artist because when you mentioned hologram, he was going there too. And oh, I know what you're talking about, the singer. Yeah. A yeah. singer that died had a concert and people uh -huh. paid to go see the concert. He was already yep. dead, but it was a holographic concert. Yep. With the da daughter and the father. The oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, when Nat King Cole and Natalie Cole sang yeah. together. Now, the Bible, of course, says the dead know nothing. Right. Oh. So it says he will, in, jo in, jo in the book of Job, when he goes to the grave, he will come up no more, neither visit his right. house. Exactly. His sons come to honor him, he knows it not, they are brought yeah. low, he perceives it not. Right. Yeah. They don't know anything. So when we saw earlier Harari's statement that history will end when we become gods, this is another aspect of you will be like God. It's mm. you will be, you will not surely die. You mm. upload your consciousness and become immortal. Another way that they mean by that, and the, the World Economic Forum you asked about, put out a very interesting graphic. Mm -hmm. um, and this was actually the World Government Summit in Dubai, mm -hmm. similar, similar uh, type of events as, as the one in, in uh, Davos with the World Economic Forum. But there's a human finger and then a little robot here. Mm -hmm. okay. We've got a graphic on that yeah. if they find it. But it, 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 when you look at that, it's meant to remind the viewer of a certain Renaissance okay. era Sistine Chapel painting yes. of God's yes. creation yes. of Adam. Mm -hmm. So that's in our collective consciousness of the finger of God creating man there, right? Mm -hmm. Notice where the position of the human finger is in the World Government Summit graphic. It's, it's where God's place, finger is. The place where God's oh, yeah. is. Yeah. So since we create artificial intelligence, we are now the creators. Mm -hmm. You will be like God. History will end when we become God. Another thing that Harari means by that phrase is when you study their writings, they really look forward to to improving, Harari speaks about this in great length. All the clips, by the way, are in technocracy. So okay. don't take my word for anything. I know this sounds crazy, but I don't want to do any speculation. Every single thing's got to be their own words. That's just how I do things as an academic. But his statements about if we can wire our brains into the cloud, we can think right into the internet and access all data and information and knowledge and even download personality traits, yeah. download memories of other people, and we can define, I mean, this is ultimate God creation power, right. counterfeit to right. the 10th power. Mm -hmm. And so that's the point at which they would say, we have, a, we have evolved, this is their words, evolved into a new species, mm -hmm. that we are transcending the biological and our brains can become silicon. We can have nanobots swimming around in the capillaries of our brains that will connect right in. So then the dividing line between me as an autonomous biological being, mm -hmm. reading something, studying something and making a decision as led by God, that would be broken and we would become merged into the group mind. And they would call that the AI technocracy God. Right, everybody wow. thinking the same mm -hmm. because I've predicted the way your behavior is going to be. And that whole ideology of continually feeding information, mm -hmm. it's designed to create scenarios and determine how Scott's gonna respond mm -hmm. if this crisis occurs. Mm -hmm. Can we rely on him to be supportive of us? Yeah. Will he become relevant or irrelevant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because his contribution is so minuscule, we could just get rid of Scott. Yeah. Because we know exactly what his decision is going to be if this situation occurs. Yeah. So it's not just an economic aspect of it, but it's a whole nother way of trying to predict. That's what commercials are all about. Mm -hmm. They want to predict. You might mention a word, and this has happened. We talked about some things sometimes within earshot of our computers. Oh, yeah. And what happens? Yep. Oh yeah, and you'll see an ad. You know, I was <laughs> talking about this, I was after yeah. an event, you know, I had the DVD table up mm -hmm. after sundown, we're all chatting with people after a Media on the Brain seminar. And the word had been going around that this was happening. And I said, well, let's give it a test. And I'm sitting there with a bunch of other people and like, is this some kind of crazy theory yeah. that's out there? And I just start talking about a certain product in earshot of my phone. Yep. And, I, and I name it a few times and like, yep. oh, there's different styles of this and fashions of that. And it's, I, I kind of, you know, amp it up a little bit. Then I pull up a news website, <laughs> open up my, my web browser, go to a news website. What kind of ads will be embedded in that page? Yep. Exactly that what product. 
exactly what we were talking about. Wow. So that's been around for a while. And they'll do even, you know, autofill, auto suggest, where you're typing yeah. in, yeah. I want to search this. It's Tires. powerful how with the suggestions that they make, people choose them. So they start shaping and shifting the way we think. Google's specialized in this oh, yeah. big time. So those those are those are ways of mind manipulation of the Edward Bernaysian model, not so the futuristic thing. That's just what we're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. Just be sure to be in God's word and know that you know we we have that that control. Because I don't think. Do you think? Let me ask a pastor this. Let me ask a theologian, yeah. a prophecy student, teacher. Can history get to that point where all human beings? Are, are wiring their brains into some hive mind and there is no individual human consciousness left? No. Uh -uh. I don't no. think it can either. Why, why not? And the reason I say no is because our guidebook is the Bible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, this decision about eternity, and that's the bigger picture here, eternal life, eternity, living for God, choosing to accept him or reject him, is made on a conscious level. Yes. You know, Joshua 24, 15 doesn't say machine choose. It says, choose you to say exactly. whom you will serve. It's yeah. an individual thing. Mm -hmm. Men are trying to make it appear as though it's not individual. Yeah. They're trying to predict our behavior, but notice what they cannot predict. They can predict as well as they can based on what you have already done. Mm -hmm. That's what they're really actually profiling, what you've already done, yep. not what you're about to do. Mm -hmm. So they're not 100% accurate. Yeah. And... Um, but no, the, the, the choice that's going to be the reason why you're saved the loss mm -hmm. is a decision you consciously make, Amen. not your computer make for you. Yeah. Mm. I, you I see that. In Revelation yeah. right. 13, I see decisions that are being made, yes. 13 and 14, right. between yes. the seal of God and the mark of the beast. That's right. Those are decisions that are being made. And yes, people are being manipulated mm -hmm. to whole world mm -hmm. wonders after the beast. Right. It's like there is groupthink happening. It's yeah. happening now. Yes. Right. And, and, yes. Excuse me, mass formation. That's a social phenomenon where you get groups with some grievance, you get groups with some agitation, yeah. with some dissatisfaction, and then they target the other, the, mm -hmm. the demonized group, the, the Jews, oh, yeah. a certain race, yes. et cetera. And when you have that patterning in recent yeah. years even, yeah. you say, well, where could that take us in the near future? In prophecy. Well, it's mm -hmm. those, those commandment-keeping people of God, mm -hmm. those servants of Jesus. Yeah. They are the reason that the pestilences... Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and so the us. scenario is already drawn. This is what I want to encourage our audience yeah. mm. uh, because we're talking about a lot of technocracy mm -hmm. and things that are just futuristic and some people are saying, I've never heard that before. Yeah. There are those individuals that are not as privy yeah. in, a, in a psychological and academic way to the things that we sometimes research and put together. So we don't want to lose you in the sauce. Uh -huh. What we're in essence saying is this is where the world is headed. Yeah. This is where the world already is on so many different levels. Yes. They're already there. Yes. And you're trying, and it's like a vacuum. If you don't have an anchor in God's word, if your life is not anchored in a real relationship of mm -hmm. conscious decisions between you and God, you can easily become the victim yeah. and the product of all of your decisions and your yeah. searches and your ideologies. Yeah. And then somebody else will be in control mm -hmm. rather than you. Yeah. But you know, 2 Corinthians 5.10 shows me that it will never get that way because yep. we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. That every one of us must give an account of the things that he has done in the body, yes. not in the in machine. In the body. In the body. I never made that connection. Whether I'm that. that. Next, my next technocracy <laughs> seminar is going to get a reference from Pastor John. In the body. That is good right there. Whether it will be good or whether yeah. it will be evil. Ah. We have to make this. We have to sound. What did you do on your computer? No, what did you do in the body? Yeah. Okay, and that's yeah. why be not conformed, but be transformed and let your body become a living sacrifice. Yeah. A sound mind. Say it again. Who yes, is, a sound mind. Yeah. Yep. Right. Not yep. a digital mind. Not, not a spirit of fear, uh -uh. but of, of power and of love and of a sound, sound mind. mind. There's a lot of fear going around a these lot. days. I mean, you're, what's the next thing that we're supposed to be afraid of? I know. And, Perfect love drives out all fear. All fear, amen. Great peace have they which love, love that law. Long. There's so much benefit to being in God's word and being in nature. And if some of the news broadcasts and the next crazy thing that's happening is a burden emotionally, spiritually to us, just unplug. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's good to know what's going on and to measure that with prophecy, but you can get imbalanced in that. Yeah. And you, you can, can stay up till two in the morning, like, oh, I got to know all the yeah. details of all the conspiracies. And, <laughs> you know, I, I want to know all the details of God's word. Yes. And I also know what the deceptions are. Mm -hmm. And I see what God's word is. And, and, and so I don't minimize this conversation. I'll say this, I've never taken the, the, the brain chips and the nanobots swimming around in my brain. I mean, <laughs> right. Like the Amish, they were just, you know, 150 years ahead of their time. You know, yeah. we, we do not want the internal combustion engine. Oh. You know, maybe, maybe that was a little, uh, <laughs> little more sensitive of a conscience than most yeah. of us would have. God bless the Amish. But they were right yeah. on, we're gonna draw a line somewhere with technology. Right. There are coming into our world in this time in which we live, technologies where we have to say, even though it's not a moral issue per se, am I giving up my human consciousness to merge into that? Mm -hmm. And so you could be the, you know, the Amish 2.0, if you are the almost Amish, you know, <laughs> we want to maintain book reading and use of yeah. screens and technology in balance and growing food and living in the country if we're able to. These, right. these blessings that God gives to us are things that we can recapture, yes. not in a fanatical way, of course. I hope yes. the Amish example didn't, people didn't misunderstand that. Yes. But sure. the idea, they were right in saying we need to draw the line mm on some things mm -hmm. are things may be different the, the the brain being merged into the into the yeah. you know the cloud right. that's a line that is definitely going to be in the sand yes. in, in many christians yes. lives yeah. truly we're living in the days where knowledge shall increase mm -hmm. and i was thinking of i had a question for you okay we had an irobot vacuum yeah. which you just don't like i don't like it because uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no you just don't like but my question about the um the, we don't even use it anymore. But what does have, that have to do with the robots? It depends on one's individual preference and, and conscience on the matter. I, you okay. know, I, I don't want to be the, the, the robot <laughs> answer man and give everybody their marching orders and rules mm -hmm. of what's in and what's out. I believe I've read counsel somewhere when the washing machines and things like that were coming in, uh -huh. that these are labor-saving devices oh, yeah, and yeah. that you know, mothers can yeah. not have to just be a mere household right. drudge and can you know, improve their minds and, yes. and play with their children, take them into nature. And these are all different quotes, not all from the right. washing machine. but. Um, I, don't, I don't have any principal yeah. opposition to the, to the robot vacuum cleaner, but yeah. there's a pastor on the other side of my table here that may set me straight. Well, no, the iRobot, I don't I have any just, issues I with it, but sometimes, scattered. right, sometimes my wife says, just, I'm going to have the, because we have wood floors in our living room, so it's yeah. a lot easier now. And, um, but sometimes I'm a kind of crazy guy in some sense. You know, the iRobot is going straight and there's a piece of dust right there and he just turns before he gets it. I think <laughs> it's, it's just taunting you. Just, you. <laughs> you just missed the piece. Yeah. So I get out the, the whippersnapper. So you follow the iRobot yeah. everywhere. And sometimes he's about to run into something to eat up one of my computer yeah. cords and I'm just like, get away. <laughs> so, well, you know, I get the idea that if we outsource all human labor to, right. to, to robots, if, if pilots don't know how to fly, fly planes anymore, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, if, if I don't know how to oh. navigate with a map without Siri in my though. ear saying, this is the way, walkie in it, you yeah. know. Yeah, it was on the news today. Driverless car. Oh, yeah. Driverless Uber yeah. cars. Yeah. 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 yeah and the, you know what? That's part of the world economic form your yeah. question yeah. you're asking about. Because you remember the headline that was, uh, welcome to 2030. You will own nothing, have no privacy, yes. and life has never been better. Yes. I think they have that on the graphic. But that yeah. was a Forbes magazine he headline by the WEF. Yes. And it, it, it got everybody just like, wait, what? We're going to have no privacy? Mm -hmm. We're going to own nothing? But, and yeah, so real estate, they talk about real estate will be a thing of the past. Yeah. Yeah, because you, co you collect and concentrate and everybody in what they call mega cities. They put out these little cartoons. They're in, they're in technocracy 10 years ago, 12 years ago now for children in school. It was mega cities on the move, and it was different scenarios about the futuristic society mm -hmm. that the global technocrats are constructing. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was about no private ownership of vehicles. It was no autonomy. You were assigned your career based on just algorithms of your personality type, and you're gonna, your children will be assigned a school and assigned a career, mm -hmm. and you're allotted certain amounts of caloric, uh, you know, for our carbon outputs and, and, yeah. and you know, the whole carbon thing from, mm -hmm. from the Pope and yeah. Laudato Si and his environmental encyclical. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, sort of agendas built yeah. into that and propaganda that's been had to push people toward that eventuality in that future of phasing out mm -hmm. humans. Mm -hmm. What about, what is the metaverse? Okay, yeah, we were touching on that with, yeah, the, with, the, with the goggles. It. Yes. Do you remember when Facebook, just a year or two ago, 
changed the name of their company. Mark yes. Zuckerberg's Facebook changed their name to Meta. I remember. Meta that. Platforms. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it was all about, we want to really push this idea of not just on a phone, not just yeah. on a computer screen that you're doing anti-social media and video games and stuff, but we want to make this a place where you're immersed and living in a virtual reality that mirrors and patterns, oh, there yeah. it is. An this ocular was, community. Yeah, exactly. Mark Zuckerberg, notice the symbolism here. He's the one without the goggles, yeah, still is. living in so reality. Ah. Right. All of the underlings are all sitting, he's walking by Pedaly. Right. You see yeah. symbolism in that. They put out this photograph. They put that there. For they a put that out there, as a message, perhaps that um, you know there control. are going to be a two caste society here. And Harari talks about this. He says those who are not uh, evolving into the new species, they call it transhumanism. We're going to mm -hmm. transcend oh, yeah. human, and we're going to become gods, as we mentioned earlier. Those who do not achieve that level of, uh, of, of, of transcendence, mm -hmm. they're going to be left behind. They will be the useless class. Mm -hmm. And what will we do with the useless class? Because their labor is not eaten, eaten, needed anymore right. to enrich the corporate establishment. He says the best answer we have right now is drugs and computer games to keep people happy. What? So you wire them in, ah, you know. Uh, so that's that's kind of the idea with the metaverse is but it's sold on this information superhighway times 10. It's a place that you can go and experience. You can go on field trips to Europe yeah. from a classroom in America yeah. and you can see your grandma in Taiwan even oh, yeah. though you're in um, California and you know you can be there together. And so this is going to be an improvement not a cartoonish thing not like literally you know, yeah like, but there's there's a graphic I want I, I, I people think of the metaverse as like people with giant heads walking around like this is my avatar like hi this is a video game right. most people won't get interested in a video game mm -hmm. but there's a graphic showing what they can do with graphic imagery you take a picture of a snowy road oh, and then right that's here. the one on the left that's an actual photo oh the ai can generate that same place in the summer like that and look it at looks the real cars are the same it same location so exactly real. Yeah. So, so oh, yeah, the reason I share that photograph in, or that AI generated image in technocracy is to communicate that if we were to accept this metaverse, remember Satan wanted to be the creator, right. he yes, couldn't he create did. a universe, That's he couldn't right. create a world, mm. but he can create a virtual world like he did with the video games, like he's done with anti-social media. And what he wants to do with the metaverse, if he can get us all living in there. Get away not, from the Bible verse. That's get good. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a plagiarist. I'm going to be like, hey. <laughs> he's real good at these Oh ones, boy, yeah. Words it, did, I don't know if the listeners caught it. Say it again. Get away from the Bible verse into the metaverse. Yeah, there you go. That, yeah. that would be the counterfeit. That's the counterfeit. Yeah. There's another oh. picture you have that shows that AI duplication. Yeah, show the other scene. one. Uh, oh, here it is. There's another one, the oh. same highway. The one on the left is the correct one with the blue skies, yeah. and the one on the right is the one that's looks been so generated. Real. Yeah, it does look real. And it, this is not showing something shocking. This is very primitive technology. Yeah. They right. were doing this six years ago. Mm. Right. What they're doing, they can do total deep fake videos of you. That is, yeah. you know, a total fake, but it's you because they've got video of you, they've got your voice print, and it sounds just like you and looks like you. Can't submit that in court, can you? <laughs> Not yet, I, but it, it could come to that point where there are challenges mm -hmm. do judicially on this, and what are the rights of citizenship of the robots and all mm. of these kind of crazy things. But that metaverse, it was kind of a flop. Honestly, yeah. when they rolled it out, yeah. it was like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so yeah. it right. might be that humanity collectively is stay, saying, no, I don't want to live with VR goggles on. Right. So that could be just what we've learned through the process. If it doesn't pan out as being a major technology invading our lives, what we've just learned is that was the devil's additional attempt, attempt mm -hmm. to create an alternate universe for us to escape into. Yeah. Wow. What about the Great Reset? Ah, oh, the Great Reset. This is yes. the Klaus Schwab wrote his book, COVID-19 and the Great Reset. He said, this is giving us an opportunity, COVID, COVID, you know, a global pandemic. Yeah. Right. You have a global response. You have World Health Organization and all, you have all these efforts to, to do the same response everywhere so it becomes standardized. Mm -hmm. But the Great Reset is more of an economic term. Mm -hmm. right. And he says that the, the pandemics give us an opportunity to create a new economic system. Never, ne in other words, never let a great crisis go to waste. Exactly. And, you know, okay. 
interestingly, in his book, he says, even though COVID isn't an existential crisis, or Harari says it's, right. it's not that deadly of a virus. I know many people died from it, but compared to like Black Plague and other major right. pandemics, it was small compared to major pandemics. And Harari, a historian, is saying, even though it wasn't, you know, a, a, a extremely deadly virus, it gives us opportunities. Look what we were able to do. We were able to lock down entire, entire countries. Now think about what that will allow us to do also with climate change. Right. So we can do lockdowns to shut down emissions, to shut down uh, business activity, to reduce carbon uh, emissions. So the, the Great Reset, own nothing, have no privacy, et cetera. The own nothing is your, is your clue. If you study economic systems throughout history, you know that when, in God's Ten Commandments, it says thou shalt not steal. Right. Mm -hmm. So that implies ownership, that you know, God affirms the idea that you know, you, you, you work, you earn, and, yeah. and that's, that's the bread for, for your family. Um, the idea also is in the Declaration of Independence, which is quoted affirmatively in one of my favorite books, The Great Controversy. Mm -hmm. And it says that people, they, they, they collected on the shores of America from, from other places in the world, coming to a place where they could enjoy the fruits of their own labor. Mm -hmm. And so that economic system of freedom is something that's in God's order. By the way, I shouldn't just quote part of that from the Great Controversy, because there's a much better reason why people came to the place called America. Yeah. Revelation 12 says the earth helped the woman. Hel yes, right. So the church of God was given refuge during a time of persecution. Yes. Right. So the rest of the quote in the Great Controversy is, and they were also given yes. that, that, that liberty of conscience in, a, in right. a land of freedom. That's the main benefit of a free society. Yes. But the economic system is something that the WEF is after. They, they want to reverse the free market model and go toward the, the dark ages economic model of feudalism. Mm -hmm. You remember during the papal times, everything was hierarchical. You can yeah. view it like a triangle, right? Exactly. You have the Pope at the top oh, of yeah. the, the, the papal system. Yep. You, have, you have cardinals and bishops mm -hmm. and all the way down to the, the commoners. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a, a corresponding political and economic system mm -hmm. with the king at the top yeah. And then below him, you have nobles, you have feudal lords, and then you have the peasants. Yes. And so that was the Dark Ages economic model, if you will. It was True. called feudalism. And it was where you own nothing. So land ownership was not a part of feudalism. So when they say you will own nothing and have no privacy and, and will be super happy, it's a, it's a neo-feudalism. Right. So I don't want to get too technical with economics. I, I, if I bring your listeners to an economics class for the remaining 20 minutes, then I, everybody's oh, going to yeah. fall asleep like everybody yeah. did in 12th, 12th grade <laughs> economics class. But that's the Great Reset in a nutshell. Basically, you've got global government debt that is unsustainable since World War II. It's just been run up more and more debt. Mm -hmm. And the debt to GDP ratios are unsustainable. And it's never going to be paid off. So you no. cancel the debts, you have a reset, a restructuring, a new monetary system, central bank digital currencies oh, yeah. to be able to monitor and control all economic activity. And that's where your specialty comes in in teaching Revelation 13, no yeah. buy, no sell. Right. Revelation 13, for those who are watching, if you have your Bible, you can look at that. We're not going to go through that right now. But God in his word has already created, mm -hmm. let me not use the phrase, has already predicted where this is headed. So, but we do have in Revelation 17, the kings of the earth, the rich men, the mighty men, the chief captains, every bondman, every free man, the military might. We have this conglomerate, this, this um, coalescing of all the powers of the earth riding upon the woman, the scarlet colored, you know, supporting the woman on the beast. The woman is sitting on this power that's just globally connected, socially, politically, financially, and, and, uh, socially, politically, financially, and religiously. And so we know where it's headed scripturally. And what I like about what Scott is doing here, he has taken us behind the scenes mm -hmm. to help us see in the digital world. And this is very important to know because everything we do today is controlled by some kind of digital means, whether we just swipe our credit card mm. or whether we own a device or whether we use a computer, whatever the case may be. And what I like that you're talking about is if you fear that, then you don't have a great love relationship with God. I want you to pull that back. The technocracy in comparison to the theology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that together. 
Well, what is, how, how is God defined in the Bible? God is love, right? right? Yeah. And that's the beginning and the end of the Conflict of the Ages series. If your listeners and if not, if your viewers oh. have not watched, read the Conflict of the Ages series, <laughs> read Patriarchs and Prophets, Prophets and Kings, The Desire of Ages, Acts of the Apostles, <laughs> and The Great Controversy. The first three words in that series are the words, God is love. Right. The last three words are, God is love. That's first right. John 4, 8, God is love. And, and that's not a mere sentimentalism. No. That's not just a feeling and just like, you know, fanciful thoughts. That is a principle. Mm -hmm. It's a principle that Jesus Christ Christ was so selfless that he would go to the cross mm -hmm. for our salvation. Yes. It's a principle of beneficence and giving. Yes. In fact, if you think about who God is, God must be more than a singular solitary entity like in our, in, in our friends, the, the Muslims in Islam, it's there is no God but Allah and Muhammad oh, is his yeah. prophet. Yeah, yeah. Right. So a single solitary deity for eternity past before the creation of angels with no son of God, no Holy Spirit. Can that God be love? He's all alone. You cannot be love unless you have, this is why the three matters. Yeah. Right, this is exactly. not just some optional thing. It's something I believe in and teach with all my heart because I believe that God is love. Right. And so Jesus, there never was a time that he was not in unity with his father. I'm Thank quoting you. there, by the That's way. Right. Some people know where I'm quoting from. Uh -huh. uh, wonderful, wonderful devotional book. Um, so that's who God is. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence is intelligence in the sense of IQ only. Right. Not mm. The principle of love. I mean, God is an intelligence, an intelligent designer. So he's the capital I, IQ. That's right. right. But we also talk these days about EQ, mm -hmm. meaning the relational aspect. Mm -hmm. That's relational. something yes. Satan. Now think about this. Doesn't artificial intelligence, doesn't, don't robots, robots kind of resemble Satan in the following way? Isn't Satan a mastermind, a high IQ? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But zero EQ, zero love. Right. Mm. Same thing with artificial intelligence. That's it's right. uber intelligent yeah. with IQ, with information, yeah. but zero love. A robot cannot love, as we were saying oh. earlier. There's no such thing as a social robot. Right. So artificial intelligence is information. It's useful to us. But what does Daniel say about the last days? As we're growing in Christ, and Daniel, this is the Apostle Paul, that we'll grow to the measure and the stature and the fullness of fullness Christ. Fullness of Christ, exactly. Jesus' yes. parable of the wheat growing to maturity. Mm -hmm. As we are growing... Daniel calls it knowledge shall increase, right? That's right. And we often think of that, and this is a true application of that verse, the internet information. Right. Yeah. But knowledge is more than information, right? What is the biblical meaning of the word to know, the, the term to know? That's an emotional, that's a conscious yeah. connection. Yeah. Adam knew Eve right. and she conceived. Bingo. This is life eternal that you know. Exactly. Yes. And that's not just an informational connection because many people could be informationally connected. Mm -hmm but transformationally disconnected. Yep. So I always say, it's a phrase my wife knows I use, we could be informed but not transformed. Yep. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So look at that today. The world doesn't want your mind to be transformed. It wants it just to be informed. Yeah. Informed connotes control. Mm -hmm. Transform connotes relationships. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So knowledge shall increase in Daniel yeah. 12 is in the context of the prophecies. Yeah. Right. It's, at the, the, it's sealed up. It's going to be open as a little book in Daniel 10. Knowledge shall increase. You eat that book, you gain a knowledge of the prophecies, metaphorically, of course. Right. But um, that knowledge, if I have a knowledge of the prophetic facts, mm -hmm. is that sufficient? No, it's to know. I, by the way, your listeners may not know what happens in the green room before we go live on Thursday Night Live. <laughs> and we have a nice chat. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about AI. Yes. We're finishing each other's thoughts here where I'm laying it up with who is God and what is knowledge. And you're finishing the yes. thought because we're yes. reading off the same biblical script. Amen. This is not a man's thoughts. Right. This no, is God's not. thought. Amen. So I just loved how you picked that ball up when I pitched it to you. Yeah, he did. And you're like, that's what knowledge is in yeah. the Bible. Yeah. It's, it's, it's relational knowledge and spiritual yeah. relational with our God. Mm -hmm. So if through our technology, we are becoming disconnected with each other, disconnected from God. We may live in the information age, but it's not the biblical knowledge age. And I don't want to miss out on knowledge shall right. increase. Right. So right. I want to be in my, in my Bible. I want to be with my family and the people that I love yes. most. I want to be deepening those relationships. And that's not to say the internet and all screens are all bad all the time. They have their uses and functions. Right. To look something up is fine, but the most important things have to stay the most important things, right? Yes. By the way, did you know what the CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, said at one point in an interview with Charlie Rose? Mm -mm. He said, he said, we, through creating Google search engines, yeah. the search engine, he said, we are making people's thinking more shallow 
and we are reducing critical thought. Wow. So mm. that's wow. so true. Part, you know, even the information, I, I, I want to have a memory too. Yeah. I'm, t I'm back on the IQ topic oh, again yeah. here. I, yeah. I got you. I, I want to not outsource all my thinking to Google. Right. Because information leads to conclusions. Like you said, information is what, what, how did you phrase that in terms of the information being what we take in to make our decisions on, right? Right. The information, if it's just to get control of you, mm -hmm. it's not leading to transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're being informed, but you're not being transformed. Look at the information superhighway, which is a very old term nowadays. Right, it's, you know, it's old, decades <laughs> old. Information superhighway. Now, but say it again, honey. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. So yeah. if the world could yeah. control your mind, it will not come to the point of transformation because your mind is not being renewed. Oh. Yeah. It's just being informed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that information that is going out there it leaves out certain things that Jesus is so replete with. Mm -hmm. That is a reflection of the Father. Have I been with you so long that you have not seen the Father? Mm -hmm. Compassion. Mm. Ah. Robots don't have compassion. No, you they, can't build that in no. because it happens in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, they can fake it. Well, and, and we don't care. This is a quote from Sherry Turkle in her book, Alone Together. She mm -hmm. says, says, we won't care that we're being duped. Like oh. we, we will know that we are being duped and right. won't care. Yeah. Yeah. And Harari says that even, uh, you know how we're talking about outsourcing all human labor to mm -hmm. robotic labor, like physical labor, blue collar mm -hmm. jobs. Right. Harari's talking about how attorneys, doctors, uh, the specialties, uh, you know, that you think need, you know, high human intellectual attainments and uh, degrees, that, that, that can be performed by AI in the near future. Yeah. But what about the bedside manner? What about the right arm uh, of the gospel? What about the doctor's love and care yeah. and compassion? Yeah. He says AI will be able to ape that. His prediction as a futurist, is that it will become so convincing wow. that we won't tolerate the, the 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 human beings that just aren't as good at it. It's kind of like that man that fell in love with the lady yes, online. Right. Yes. He, he lo he, his heart was 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 yeah. wedded to that he had fakeness. Fear with right. Her. He was duped. Yeah. 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 He, he had this emotional he had fear with a computer yeah. generated uh, that he created, picked all the mm -hmm. different things he wanted this robot to have uh -huh. and this AI to have, and just. Yeah. Yeah got drawn in, but where AI falls short in those critical moments in a surgical room, what, what, what I read in the futurologist, Michio Kaku, talked about this, he says, mm. where the computer falls off is, in that critical moment, this person is 78. They decide, saving them, is it an economic benefit? Ooh. Or is it a family connection? Yeah. Mm. Are we going to spend that much money on a surgery to give them three more years? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to say, this is going to cost too much to save them? Mm -hmm. Whereas the human compassion says, yes. their family loves them. Yes. If we could give them two more years, I would want the same thing. Mm -hmm. AI can't make that split decision. Yeah. Yeah. Because they say, what's the em economic impact yep. mm -hmm. if this computer, which costs millions to make, wastes time, quote unquote, mm. on a guy that's gonna die anyway. Wow. Mm. They make those split decisions to mm -hmm. let him die. Mm -hmm. Whereas we'd say, hey, you know what? His wife is waiting for him. She wants him home. Yeah. yeah. The doctor says, I thought about my grandfather in that moment. Amen. Mm. And I did everything I can to save that man. Oh. That cannot, and that's the compassion that yes. God puts in us Amen. that can never be duplicated by oh. artificial intelligence. That's why it's called Artificial. Artificial. <laughs> well, that was so beautiful. Yeah. And, and you know, usually we're used to thinking of euthanasia and these dark topics, oh, oh, what's yeah. going on in the headlines in Canada in recent yeah. months. And you put it so beautifully of what the human compassion does yes. offer. Yes. Yeah. And that we've got to keep offering and right. have the compassion for the unborn yeah. and have the compassion for the elderly and every human soul. And in wars, we're there to serve the, the, the wounded were right. there to serve the displaced and the refugee of every race and religion. Right. And that's the, that's the arm of Jesus Christ, that right arm of compassion and caring that's right. that wins the soul. Yeah. So that's just beautiful. Yeah, that's where when it comes down to it, that's what separates the machine yep. from yeah. God's creation. Yes. Yep. It's not there. Nope. Pity. He had compassion on the multitude. Ah. Yes. yes. You know, yes. wow. Because they were yes. lost without a shepherd. Yes. Right. Yep. He, yes. he said, in the closing moments, John, behold your mother, yeah. behold yeah. your son. Yeah. Yeah. Those are moments when a person's on their deathbed mm -hmm. and there's another family member there, they're saying, I may not make it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you take care of my mom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you take care of my son? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
those are things that a machine can't do. Can't those do. are those split decisions that yeah. God built in us yeah. that can never yeah. be duplicated by a machine. It's true. Yeah. So now we have about six minutes left here tonight on the program. We talked about so many things that yeah. really many people are going to go back and look at their internet and say, man, this is great. social robots, <laughs> yeah. metaphors, great reset, you know, artificial intelligence, the hum transhumanism, you know, uh, all these different things that you talked about. And I, I take my hat off to your academia. These are things that we need to know so that if you were to say, what's the purpose behind this, this information that you gather and glean, what would you say your mission is for learning these things? The, the subtitle to technocracy is what comes next. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key. Mm -hmm. You ever heard row, row, row your boat gently down the street? Yes. That sounds so nice, but we just did a video on our, on our YouTube. I'm doing more videos now. Okay. And I was at Niagara Falls. Okay. And I took, oh. I took little segments leading up to Niagara, way Ooh. back when the river's just looking nice. Ooh, I yes. like that. And it was, you know, you might be on this nice river on a kayak or a right. canoe, but you don't realize what's ahead, and you're probably going to want to be not going right. the direction that the cultural trends around you are taking you. Right. right. Let the waters take you down. Yeah. So you had an opportunity to, to, to paddle upstream back there, but now, next clip, the waters are raging. Mm. Now, next the clip, is in trust me, this is not There's where you want to go right off of the right. falls. The, if you follow, the Bible says, do not follow a crowd to do evil. That's in Deuteronomy, right? right? It, 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 don't be conformed. Be an individual. Be a thinker, not a mere reflector of other men's thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is, where do we stand now and what decisions need to be made now so that we're not going down the wrong track here, gently down the stream that mm -hmm. the big tech, you know, merrily, world. Merrily, merrily, merrily. It's a good old I time. It's efficiencies. I love doing everything they throw at me and in increasing frequency and quantity mm -hmm. to the point where I've got this pleasure trap that you were describing earlier. We get addicted. Our relationships are disrupted. We're already seeing the fruit yeah. of just doing, taking our cues from big tech. When we do what they suggest every time, as many times as it pleases, instead of having back to digital disconnect, yes. instead of having those things that we put rules, boundaries, prioritize our relationships, mm -hmm. have ways that we have a check on our digital immersion. Because if we become immersed in the technologies as they exist today, Mm -hmm. It might sound like a crazy futuristic dystopian future that there's no way I'm ever going to do that. If you were to go back 20 years and describe the way that you're interacting with technologies now, do you think your 20 self of 20 years ago would be a little shocked? Right. Yeah. Maybe we've already crossed some lines that we want to say, you know what, I got to put some boundaries mm -hmm. on my use of these devices. And with, especially with our children. Yeah. Let oh, our children grow it. up fully human. Sure. And yes. let them decide when they're older mm -hmm. whether they, you know, want to yes. bring these things in and to what extent. Because if you make them an addict from an early age, you've taken away oh. their free will. You see little kids with their um, phones and, and I, small iPads. In their carriages. In their, yeah, baby carriages. The baby carriages. can barely sit up. Yeah. But there's a, I look at cool. their eyes in yes. Walmart or some of the department yeah. stores. I just, they're in their shopping carts and they give them Their eyes are just like yep. glued Mesmerized. almost. Yeah, they do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And if you take away, if you try to pick it up, the moment that uh, that the device gets lifted out of the they, they watch it. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. You put it back. Okay, okay, I don't want to upset you. And it gets become a battle because they are no longer, you are no longer the parent. Yeah. Mm. You've just given over the molding of your child yes. to a machine. Yeah. It's amazing. They so. need their mother. They need, they need yes. that bond. It's so important because how are they going to understand who God is? Mm -hmm. It's through their parents at those early right. ages. Mm -hmm. It's through that connection, that presence. Mm -hmm. wow. And so in, in, in the way I look at your programming and I like what you do on 3ABN, mm -hmm. what I also see is that the ultimate aim of our supreme God is that we prepare for another world. Amen. Yes. I did a sermon called The Great Reset. God yeah. is going to have a great reset. Yeah. No more sin, no more crying, no more death, no more pain, <laughs> no more computers. Yes. The ultimate. And the ultimate <laughs> the great, great reset, reset is going to be the great reset that Jesus has gone in a yes. compassionate, loving, uh, substitutionary, sacrificial way to make our lives different. Yep. Yeah. And that's what we're committed to here at 3AB and that's why Amen. we see you a significant part of it. Mm -hmm. This is so necessary for a generation that is literally disconnected from mm. God. 
Yeah. You ready and for you're the final? And you're blowing the trumpet. So, uh, yeah, you reconnect. Know. If I were to say it in one word, That's you got right. digitally disconnect. It's reconnect. Reconnect like with that. Jesus. The three angels' messages, the cross, Jesus soon coming and being prepared for that time of trouble that's yes. going to break upon the world. That's, that's, right. what, that's what gets me up in the morning doing this as it does for you. You, you know, Scott, every time you come here, thank you for coming and I know. breaking opening some things, the terminology, mm -hmm. technocracy. That's a new word. <laughs> Add that to your dictionary. Yeah. Don't spend a whole lot of time there because we have a greater book to read, Amen. not Facebook, face Amen. the book, <laughs> so that when the time comes for the Lord to be a part yes. of your life. Uh, so what's what's down the road for you? Give us 30 seconds here, or 20 well, seconds. Well, uh, folks, get on our newsletter. They just email me, Belt of Truth Ministries That's right. at gmail.com, and yes. I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated on the newsletter about I what's get next. I and get them. Yeah, you get them. <laughs> good, get good. Em. Angela's on the newsletter. Yeah, That's right. And uh, it's... Uh, it, informative, it's uh, mm -hmm. practical, it's biblical, and it's present truth. So that's, right. yeah. that's the number one thing I recommend people do so that we don't lose you here. We can keep a relationship going forward. That's right. And we're all in the same boat, getting people ready. And as I think I like to cap it up this way, are you ready for the final movements? That's what Scott has been talking about on all the things he mentioned tonight. These invasions are trying to keep you unprepared. Yeah. You can go to finalmovements.com where our church is going to be hosting a, an evangelistic series. And you can join us wherever you are in the world. You can download yeah. videos and be a part of our lessons. But we thank you, Scott, for thank being you. here. Thanks, Thanks for keep having Keep the me. belt of truth tightly fastened. Amen. And on behalf of 3ABN, my wife and I, yes. until we see you again, God bless, God bless you. you.